Hey, 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 welcome back to the Hero Whispers, everybody. My girls, today it's your chief host, Supergirl, Jeannie Marie, back today with amazing guests. Listen to the headline. Today's show headline is Four Seasons, One Dalton, and 500 million in luxury sales. How Gabrielle Barron created a mass empire by leveraging her best asset. She is the bomb diggity in Boston. <laughs> we are recording live from Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. I am so pleased to announce and introduce to you Gabrielle Barron, a.k.a. Gabby Girl. But first, let me just tell you a little bit about the show in case this is your first time tuning in. We are the Hero Whispers podcast. We are all about inspiring, empowering college women and young women to launch into life with the best tools we could possibly help provide for them, including mentorship, personal branding, career direction, networking, whatever they need to make them bigger, better, stronger, faster, because they are the future. And that's what we're all about. And so we're curating content to really help inspire and empower them. So today we have this amazing young woman, Gabby Barron. Her and I go way back to a vacation in Club Med where we became sisters. We call it sisters. And (laughs) since then, she has risen to the ranks in real estate in Boston. And we're going to learn all about that. I'm so happy. And now make sure you wait until the end of the podcast so you can find out how to get our gifts for today's show gifts about becoming how your best at taking your best asset and figuring out what the roadmap is so stay tuned to the end of the show but for now let's meet gabrielle baron welcome to the show thank you so much Jeannie. thank you so much for having me i really appreciate it and congratulations on all your success so far oh can't even can I cannot even hold a candle to you. Let me read just a little bit about our girl, okay? Gabrielle Barron is a 15-year veteran in the real estate profession, where she has been selling luxury real estate in the downtown and surrounding suburbs. For the past 12 years, she has been part of a Boston's number one ranked real estate firm, Campion and Company, working closely alongside Tracy Campion as part of her team. She was critically involved in over 400 transactions, totaling well over $500 million. Bam! The past three years, Gabby has been part of a dedicated on-site sales team for the new Four Seasons private residences at 1 Dalton Street. Marketing the 160 residential condominiums has resulted in securing over 130 binding sales agreements for a total of $1.3 billion in sales year-to-date. Hello, Boston! Her reputation for honest communication and active listening has earned her the respect of her clients and other high-end real estate professionals in the community. Gabby's integrity, attention to detail, and creative nature allows her to give each client the highly personalized attention that they deserve. Amazing! I am so proud of you and what you have accomplished. Seriously, like, congrats. I appreciate that very much. It means a lot coming from you. And you're so humble. It's crazy how humble this girl is, okay? I just want to know, and I think our guests want to know, how you got started, how you got here, okay? Like, what was your journey? Because you started as a teacher coming out of college, and then you ended up just knocking it out of the park in real estate. So let's let's hear about that. Okay, well, I guess I need to go back one step further from teaching to explain my career path. So I went to the College of Charleston, and I graduated there with a Bachelor in Science for Elementary Education. And I will be very honest, Jeannie, I was lost. I felt a little lost right after graduation. A good friend of mine had moved to Manhattan, and she heard of a temp job, which she thought of me. I got called. Of course, I happily accepted And I moved to New York, and it was with a top design textile firm called F. Schumacher & Company. It was only a temp job for three months, but I said, you know what, it's going to get me to New York, and I just went. Um, After that three-month period, the company liked what I was doing for it. I was happy, and they actually created a job for me. So I ended up staying, and I became part of their marketing and public relations department. 
um, was there for a few years and realized there wasn't really anywhere to grow. So I started thinking I might need to move on. And right about that time, um, the dot-com era was booming. And I received another lead from a friend. And so I interviewed with a tech company, ended up landing that job. And I found myself in the marketing department learning a whole new industry. And I was with that firm for quite a while and wasn't planning to leave. But unfortunately, September 11th, oh, September 11th happened. Um, so that changed everything for everyone. And my whole team got let go. But the owner of the company saw something in me. He actually asked me to stay on for like another six months, which I did. And I even got a raise, which I'll admit I felt a little guilty about. But during <laughs> that time, I used it to decide, okay, let me try teaching. And I'm going to try moving to a new city. So I picked Boston. So I got recertified. Um, and that's kind of how I got to the teaching aspect of my career. And I ended up not getting a place in early childhood because the certification took so long to get to me. Um, but I did hear like an early elementary position. So I said, you know what? It's in kids. It's in the school. I'll take it. And I ended up having three other side jobs just to kind of make ends meet to maintain the lifestyle that I was used to living in Manhattan. And I just figured this isn't the path that I want to see myself on. So I decided not to go ahead and sign another year with them and get back into business. And I got a lead for one of my co-teachers about a top real estate agent needing an assistant. And okay, wait, I just, I, I just want to okay. say one thing. I, I want to say one thing. I want everyone to know that everything and every, every step on her journey was through a lead, through a exactly. networking contact. And you exactly really right. worked that. I mean, that is incredible because that's really how, you know, most things, successful, happy things happen. I mean, through other people, but I'm just making a point because. No, you're exactly one, right. And that's. I agree. That's something I would stress as well. But anyway, so that's just kind of how the path came to be. And um, here I am today. <laughs> okay. Okay. But that, <laughs> I mean, I can go here's further if you'd like. But... <laughs> okay. So, well, here's the thing. You, again, I'm, I'm just going to point out, she's super humble. and She's not going to, you know. She's not okay. If you need me to go yeah. into more detail, I'd be more than happy to. <laughs> I want to hear. Yeah, I want to hear because I know sure. that you, uh, it wasn't an easy transition, okay? Because real estate's not an easy transition for anyone. But um, you you had certain things that you did to make it work. So that I think we want to share that with you because it's great inside information. Be more than happy to. Be more than happy to. So so I've been with a few different companies throughout my, my tenure in real estate. Um, I've been very lucky where I've always, though, um, had an opportunity to work with some of the top agents in the field. So I would say if you're, you know, if you're looking to get into a, you know, a career or change careers, you, know, you want to tr learn everything you can. Um, try to become an expert in your field. And... You know, for me, I was going to open houses. I was scouring the data. I was listening to what I heard around. So just so you can become knowledgeable, um, which is very helpful. The first company I was with, um, I was an assistant. And again, it was all new. So I was like a sponge. I would make sure I was super organized with my notes. I would, you know, learn how to use all the systems. I would... Um, you know, just really put the time in, um, even if it took a little bit extra, just so I would be you know, knowledgeable about the neighborhood, um, the school system. You know, you just want to know everything. So when you're asked a question, you can answer it intelligently. Um, so as far as, you know, not an easy ride I, and some advice, I would say um, become an expert, really listen, observe, Reading social cues is a huge part of really any of life, but it's specifically uh, real estate. Um, you have to try to make sure, you know, just kind of see what's happening so you know when to back off or when to engage. Um, and also, too, pitch in whenever you can. Volunteer your services. It may not be something you want to do, but 
it's really helpful to know people, to let people know that you are hungry and you're engaged and you're excited about where you are and, and, and for having that opportunity. Um, always, Jeannie, I would say always be professional. You never know who's watching. You never know who you're speaking with. Um, and so you just have to be, you know, put your best foot forward in everything you do. And I mean, I guess your, your character is really all that you have. So being honest and trustworthy um, and being organized, that's really essential in anything you're doing. Um, so that's, those are my, my, some of my oh. advice. Well, I know the professionals, it makes a huge difference, especially in the luxury market, right? Mm -hmm. I find it, you know, everyone has their own style. So I'm not saying there's one, one right or one wrong answer for this, but I personally and again, I'm looking at some of the people that have really succeeded. They always are dressed impeccably. Their nails are done. They have their all their notes. They've got their keys where they need it. You know, they've got it all down pat. You don't want to you, you want to trust this person if they roll up and they look like they just crawled out of bed and flip flops. Like it shows. I don't know. I think it doesn't show that they're. Again, this is just my opinion, but. I take it really seriously. So I, I, and I, I, I realize that people are trusting me either with finding them a home or selling their home. And so you want to represent all the hard work that they've done and you want to respect their time. And you just want to, I don't know. I just want to be as professional as you can. Yeah. I mean, you actually do that. And what, <clears throat> one of the things I understood from you, as you were building your business in Boston was that you used mm -hmm. your network. Um, yes. You were, let's just say my friend Gabby is a very social butterfly. Okay. But in this case, it really served you well, didn't it? It, it did. Um, and it does. Um, and as I'm getting older, I'm realizing the importance of going to conferences and staying in touch with um, people, not even in, in the local area, but just in the industry across the country. Um, but I do think it's important. And again, always be professional, but I think networking is something that is, if, especially if you're just out of college or just trying to switch careers and find your path, um, networking can be very, very valuable. And you know, when you, when you got your first client, um, in real estate, was it through the network? Was it through just your due diligence of being on the job or, you know, how did well, that happen? Me, and then yeah, you kept so, getting more clients and more clients and more clients. Yeah. So I ended up, you know, it does help. Um, you know, I was associated and am associated with very high end, um, well-respected companies. So your past um, transactions and the reputation um, of the firm and of yourself then allow other people to have the confidence to call. So your track record is important. Um, but as far as, you know, some qualities that people are looking for that are really important, especially in, in the real estate industry, you know, ethics are very crucial in this industry. That's really all you have to go on. So the honesty and the integrity part um, I can't say enough about that. Also, you need to listen to your clients. You need to ask questions because if you, if they're telling you something and you're not listening and you're showing them the wrong things, that's a waste of everyone's time. They're going to go somewhere else. So really trying to figure out what their needs are and then find the best property. It's like a big puzzle. Um, but that's, that's really important. And also the client confidentiality. Um, a lot of people are coming through the door. They've got big jobs. They've got big lives and they're private. So no matter where you are professionally, socially, don't talk about your clients. You never know. It's always a small world. You never know who knows who. So I think a real, one of my mantras, and it's a good habit for anyone, I think, to get into the habit of is if you can't say something and have the other person hear it, or if you can't 